on the 20th of November, I will be having a big garage sale. So if you lack anything and you need to purchase something for cheap, come to my garage sale. It'll be on the 20th. And um, I will also uh, have a little table set up for Friends of Potter Schools. I have some things uh, that people made, some handcrafted items um, that where the proceeds will go to Friends of Potter Schools. Um, and I, I do need some uh, help. So if you can help with the garage sale, please let me know. Did it, Michaela? Uh, the other thing is that uh, our UMW will be participating in kind of an adopt a child um, for Serenity this year for Christmas. So um, see Carol Martin for any information on that. Does anyone else have any announcements for the good of the community? Yes, Mr. Jeff. Trustees tomorrow. Trustees November. meeting tomorrow. It's the 1st of November. All of a sudden, it's November. So if you're on the trustees, we're meeting on Zoom. Other announcements? Okay. Then we will begin our worship. Uh, I will ask um, the uh, newly uh, newly 20-year-old uh, Andrea, who is our liturgist today, her birthday was yesterday, um, and uh, she will lead us in our call to worship, and uh, then we will sing. Good morning. Um, please join me in the call to worship. Throughout all our lives, God is with us. Praise be to God. Even when we are faced with difficult decisions, God's presence is near. We don't know which way to go, but God will guide and lead us. Open your hearts today to God's gently healing leading. We open our lives to God, that we may faithfully serve God all our days. Let's sing together to God be the glory. It's uh, there will be on your screen.
We'll mention that uh, this is also um, wedding week for Emily Martin. Uh, next, by this time next week, uh, Emily will be a married lady. <laughs> so blessings on Emily and Bill as they prepare that big day. And Carol. And Bill. <laughs> We continue to pray for John, uh, son of Mavis, um, Bob, uh, Carol's brother, Nellie for healing and strength, Judy uh, for healing and strength, Nicole and Kevin, uh, Dorothy for healing, and of course all of us as we go through this, um, this journey. So we will start our prayer uh, section with Andrea will lead us in the opening prayer. Uh, we will have a, a time for silent prayer, and then I'll close with a pastoral prayer.
We especially pray for those in the medical field who have been on duty for us all this time, working so hard to keep us healthy. Have mercy on them, Lord, and give them strength and courage. And give us strength and courage to protect ourselves and each other. During this time of trauma, we pray for those with addictions and anxiety and depression and mental health issues. Help us to help and support one another. Oh Lord, we pray for peace and an end to violence, and we pray that we are able to see one another as you see us, one human family in this world. This day, oh Lord, we pray for the family of Ruth Clifton, who passed away this, this past week. We give you thanks for her life, for all that she meant to others, we pray for the family and friends who mourn her loss. We pray this day for Emily and for Bill as they embark on a new adventure. Bless them, O oh Lord, in their marriage and in their lives. We pray for John and Bob and Nellie and Judy. And Kevin and Dorothy. We pray for all who are experiencing medical crises and financial challenges, Lord. In your love and mercy, you have heard our prayers, both spoken and unspoken. Be with us and strengthen us and those whom we love. Touch our hearts with your mercy, for we ask this in Jesus' name taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom,
hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is the story of Ruth. Um, it begins in Ruth 1 and uh, goes for 18 verses. It's a long scripture, and it's a scripture about um, an older woman and a younger woman. And so uh, Andrea and I are going to share this together. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab. He and his sons, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of that man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there, but Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. They both took Moabite, Moabite wives. The names of one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth. When they had lived there for about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons or her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had had consideration for his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought that there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they are grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week we remember those who have gone before us, our saints, and those that we loved and lost. We may feel alone. But this is also a time in our year to be reassured that we are never alone. Our loved ones are present with us, intertwined in a heavenly web of saints, keeping watch and loving us from afar and guiding us as we love and honor them. A few years ago, we hosted a faith in film viewing and discussion of the movie Coco, an animated film about a young man's experience at the time of Dia de los Muertos. Miguel accidentally slips into the land of the dead and encounters his ancestors who help him to get back to the land of the living. 
Uh, there are a lot of twists and turns and a lot of good music in there too, but it's an amazing film about the Latin American and Spanish cultural holiday and the rituals uh, surrounding that. And it talks about what we believe about those who have died and how we keep their memories alive. Now, when we were considering this uh, film and presenting it to our children, um, some of our adults got a little squirmish. They said, you know, this is a pretty heavy subject, this whole death thing. Um, I'm not sure if it's appropriate, but our children surprised us. It's about death and dying. Is that appropriate for children? What they knew about the film and some had already seen it, and they understood the message that as long as we remember those who have died, they are not really separated from us. In fact, our children wonder about and think about and talk about what happens after we die, maybe more than we would like them to. In fact, just last week, my friend Colin uh, came through the doors of the church asking me, what heaven is like. Of course, uh, I gave a preliminary answer, but I thought, man, this is a longer discussion than I have time for right now. <laughs> but today, we, may, we mark the very Americanized version of Dia de los Muertos Halloween. Historically, it's the evening before All Saints Day, November 1st. And this is the time of year when we think about and we wonder about the land of the dead and what happens after we die and the afterlife. We think about those who have died and our connection with those we've lost. Next Sunday, we will remember our loved ones with a special slideshow, as I told you before, to honor those who have gone before us. So please send those names and photographs so that we can honor them. When we lose someone to death, young or old, expected or unexpected, a hole in our heart is born. And that metaphoric hole remains no matter how we heal, no matter if we remarry, no matter if we have other children, no matter if we move forward in life, even through death or separation, the bond that we have with that person remains. We remain connected across the boundaries of life and death. As I said, like a web stitched together across this world and the next. We are connected to those in our extended family, living and dead. In our scripture lesson today, it tells the story of a special example of that connection shared by individuals. It demonstrates the bonds that we share with our family, even those who we choose to be our family, our chosen family. It demonstrates how we should care about each other and the ways that God cares about us. Now, the book of Ruth is all about returning. Returning to one's homeland, returning to God, returning to who we are supposed to be. And the Hebrew word for return uh, occurs 12 times in the first chapter of Ruth. And it's the same word that is used to mean repent, return, in the Old Testament, or to turn away from the worship of foreign gods. In this book, God is saying, return to me. Return to your homeland. Return to who you are supposed to be. And so here in Ruth chapter 1, we are introduced to Naomi, an older woman whose husband and grown sons had all died during a natural disaster, the Great Famine. Now, in 2013, scientists from Tel Aviv University and Germany's University of Bonn revealed their research of pollen, a 
not going to go through all the research, but it pointed to a major lengthy famine in the region between the years 1250 and 1100 BCE. The research team drilled sediment cores from the Sea of Galilee and the Wadi Zilam near the Dead Sea. And over the course of three years, researchers combed meticulously through the layers. They discovered that within the period of 1250 to 1100 BCE, there was a sudden and dramatic decrease of Mediterranean trees that require large amounts of water, particularly pines, oaks, and carrots. And in their place was a rise in the farming of dry climate trees, such as olives. The researchers identified this as the result of repeat successive droughts within this 150 year period. So the famine in the Levant region, uh, being Syria and Jordan and Israel and Palestine and Lebanon, lasted for 150 years. And many people died from disease and starvation, including Naomi's wife and her grown sons. And this left Naomi unprotected. She was without a husband and without sons. And this was a dangerous place for a woman in the ancient world. Furthermore, she was living in a foreign land away from the connections of her extended family. Perhaps she had cousins or siblings, but they were not living with her. So she decides in her time of need to travel away from Moab and back to Bethlehem. Now, does anyone know um, what Bethlehem means in uh, Hebrew? This is anyone who took Hebrew in their college courses. No? Okay. Bethlehem, actually the, the literal name is house of bread. So they are leaving the famine to go to the house of bread. And they're going to reconnect with her family and to escape the hunger and death and tragedy of her recent past. But she was not alone. Her two daughters-in-law, both widows themselves, the wives of her dead sons, were with her. So she encouraged them to return to their own families. Look, you, I have nothing more to offer you. I have no sons. I have nothing. I'm, I'm going back to my family. You go back to your family. And her daughter-in-law, Orba, did just that. But Ruth did not. Ruth stayed with Naomi. Ruth did not leave her mother-in-law. Ruth said to her, you are my family now and forever. Where you go, I will come. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people shall be my people and your God an amazing statement of commitment. Forsaking her own self-protection, Ruth stepped out into the unknown to remain connected with the woman who would now be her family. Now, many of us have done something similar, left all that we knew to create a new family, a new series of connections in a new community, just as Ruth did. Here in this church, for example, we come from our own cultures, our own languages and customs, our own ideas about God and the church, and we join together to create not what we had in our own countries, but something else, something new, a new culture, something born of all of us, something that is a combination of us. We create a new kind of family across boundaries. And we are intimately connected with one another. And our fidelity to one another is a powerful reminder of the fidelity of God. God is committed to us and will remain with us through all the travels of this life, in this life, and in the next. Part of my answer to Colin last week was that I believe that God loves us. So no matter what happens in the next life, it will be wonderful, we'll be with God, and we'll be happy. 
As we pause today, let us remember the extended family of which we are part throughout the world, across the boundaries of life and death, and let us remember that God has knit us together, one to another, into a single entity for a single purpose, to be the love of God in this world. And may God love and bless us always. Let us sing together, O oh God, our help in ages past, uh, grace will lead us. Thank you. 